Hey guys, David with the First Place Auto Parts. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. You know, Tri-5 Chevrolets are a unique set of vehicles. There's three years, 55, 56, and 57. And identifying them can sometimes be different for the average car person. I know this myself. When I take my 56 Chevy out for a drive, I go to get gas, and I have someone that walks up and says, you know, I had a 55 Chevrolet just like that. I think to myself, sure you did, because this is a 56 Chevy, but the reality is to the cursory person or to the view outside, even to make some car people, they look a lot alike. But if you know what you're looking for externally, there are some very distinct differences. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at those things, just identify the differences between the 55, 56, and 57 Chevrolet, after some visual cues, look, the 57 is really a give me with the hood bullets on top of the hood, but the 55 and the 56, they look a lot alike unless you know what you're looking for. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the exterior items that make a difference between a 55, a 56, and 57 Chevy. So you better know what you're looking at the next time you go to a car show or you pull up to some guy and you say, hey man, I know somebody that had one of those things. This time you're gonna know exactly what you're looking at. You'll know if you're right or not. Now, I love Tri-5 Chevy, and I've owned at least one of every model year, which is 1955, 1956, and 1957 Chevy. I currently have a 56 Chevy that's built along the gas for things, but I've had 55s and I've had 57s as well. Look, I think the 55 probably makes a better hot rod, and we're gonna get into some of the external reasons for that outside the, in the body and the way it's put together, but the reality is the 1955 Chevrolet was groundbreaking for GM and for Chevrolet that year. Look, it shared almost nothing with the 1954 Chevrolet, and it was leaps and bounds, better looking, but also better performing. You get the 55 Chevrolet with the brand new, uh, for 1955, 265 cubic inch V8 motor, which would revolutionize not only cars, but also racing. The interesting thing about that motor is that an oil filter was actually optional in 1955. We couldn't even fathom that today, but the reality is, oil filters were an option in 55, apparently, they didn't have to care a lot about clean oil or engine longevity. But some of the things that separate the 1955 from the later versions are this. Starting at the front of the car, the 55 Chevrolet has teardrop turn signals located between the front fender and the lower splash panel. Also, the grill on the 55 Chevrolet does not extend all the way out to below the headlights. So the grill assembly is very different than the following two years. And also the, the turn signals are drastically different. But the big thing too is, is that over the top of the headlights, the, what we call the eyebrow area, it was much more subtle than it was on the 56 and 57 Chevrolet. And the front end on the hood, it only had the Chevrolet crest. Now, on the back of the car, what you got were some differences back there as well, starting with where you put fuel in the car. The fuel filler door was actually on the driver's side rear quarter panel and it was square in shape. You actually open that up and there would be your gas cap, which would differ greatly in the six and seven Chevys. But the big thing was the rear wheel openings. And when you're looking from the side of the Tri-5 Chevrolet, the 55 Chevrolet had squared off rear wheel openings. Now, I can speak from experience that when it came time to try to put bigger wheels and tires, it was very difficult to squeeze those things in between that lower fender, the way that thing was cut out, and the brake drum. So it made it a little more difficult to change tires and wheels, which would be addressed with the 1956 Chevrolet. But the 55 Chevy has a totally different look. I think it looks best with the front bumper off, maybe a moon gas tank up front, but it definitely is a good hot rod. Whereas the 56 and 57 Chevrolets became more stylized, the 55 Chevy was the original one and it was way cool. Now a 1956 Chevrolet is a totally different looking animal, especially from the front. What GM did with that was they really modified the front end to give it a little bit more classier look, a little more chrome. And this was when the full size or the full width front grille became into play. And also the rectangular uh, turn signals that were at the front of the car. Also the splash panel changed, but really also on the hood what changed was they added a V a chrome V or a gold V depending on the trim level you had just below the Chevrolet crest that was in the middle of the front of the hood also that area that was those eyebrow areas above the headlights became more pronounced they got bigger and more and they got longer and there's actually a little bit different change on the top of the fenders as well so the difference between a 55 and a 56 Chevy from the front end is the 56 Chevy has a lot more chrome especially with that full width grille 
Now, in the back of the car, the fuel filler door moved to the back driver's side tail light assembly. And the tail light assembly, it's really subtle. And every time I go to the gas station to put gas in my car, someone asks me why I'm putting gas in the tail light. But there's a simple lever that you turn, and that tail light assembly drops down and reveals the gas cap. So the 55 or a fuel filler door on the side of the vehicle went away for 56. It got hidden. And that's one of the subtle differences. Also, the tail light assemblies did change. But the big news from the side is the way the rear wheel well is opened up. The wheel well opening is cut. It has a much more sweeping shape to it. It was much different than the 55. You saw more of the wheel and it also made it easier to change those rear wheels if you ever had a flat. The 56 Chevy was an improvement on the 55, but what came next was the 57, which was darn near a re redesign, especially in the hood and the front end area. Now, 1957 was really a major redesign. Look, all three of your cars share the roof, the doors, and the trunk. But from 1957, there were a lot of things that changed, starting with a bump up in not only cubic inch displacement to 283, but you'd also get fuel injection and positive traction. Now in 57, the whole front end changed. Look, I mentioned those hood rockets before. It necessitated a totally different hood because there's cutouts for those rockets to fit in there, but also the front grill area changed. It became, the bumper changed, it became swoopier and became more pronounced. The grill itself, there's actually a floating grill bar in the middle of it that now housed the actual crest itself, but the V stayed on the hood. So the, the grill emblem or the crest moved from the hood down to the hood bar, but the hood bar then had two little circular turn signals in it, and there were also little bullets on the bumper that could either be chromed or black are blocked off altogether. But the 57 Chevy front end is unmistakable like anything else. The 57 Chevy looks like it has fins, but the reality is if you see up like a 150 57 Chevy, you realize that that is not a fin at all. What makes it look like a fin is actually the stainless steel strips and that solid aluminum piece, that go, that thin aluminum piece that goes inside those strips makes it look like a fin. But the rear chrome or the rear stainless steel on the back of the fin is now a hinged area. So a lot changed. The difference between the 55, 56 and 57 Chevy it was a, a process of refinement. And I would say that the sweet spot, especially for me, was that 56 Chevy. It had a lot of the simplicity of the 55, but it had a little bit more doodads on it and chrome trim than the, than the 55 had, but it didn't quite have as much as the 57. So the 56 for me was kind of that sweet spot. Everyone has their preference and their, their likes and what their favorite, but for me, it was a 56 Chevrolet. If you're restoring a classic American muscle car or truck, please check us out at First Place Auto Parts at fpautoparts.com. Look, it's super easy to use. It's always open 24 hours a day. And there we have literally got tons of high quality restoration performance parts to either finish your restoration, make your car go faster, or make it stop harder. Guys, until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.